a lot for being here. Uh, the next uh, talk is by Parveen Sheikh. Uh, she's going to talk about an endangered species, the Indian skimmer. Uh, her talk is entitled Birds in Badlands, Monitoring of Indian Skimmer Population in the National Chambal Sanctuary. Please play her video. Thank Good you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Parveen from Bombay Naturalist Society, and I'll be presenting about our work on monitoring the Indian skimmer population in the National Chambal Sanctuary. Indian skimmer is listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List, and there are less than 2,000 birds which are recorded uh, at present from the entire distribution range. The species was quite widely distributed in Southeast Asia historically, but at present, the maximum population is confined to India and Bangladesh, and with breeding records only from India. If you see this map uh, in India, also the bird was quite uh, quite widely distributed uh, before, but at present there are only records from the Central Indian uh, landscape of the Gangetic Basin uh, on the west coast in Gujarat and Maharashtra, and on the east coast from Orissa, West Bengal, and Andhra Pradesh. And in Central Indian, uh, in Central India is our study area, National Chambal Sanctuary. Uh, the National Jambal Sanctuary is a 600 uh, kilometer of the river which is protected and it hosts a significant uh, uh, population of Indian skimmer uh, for breeding every year. There are 500 to 600 birds which visit the sanctuary for breeding. Uh, this is how the habitat of uh, the sanctuary looks like. Uh, there are vast sandbanks and uh, the river is quite uh, clean as there is no major industrialization on the river. And uh, in summer, there are an enormous number of sandbars that are created for these birds for breeding. Our objectives of this uh, monitoring uh, project was to monitor the breeding population. Uh, the birds don't stay on this river throughout the year. They visit the river system only during the breeding season. They start arriving by November, December. By They colonize by February and they leave this river by July and go to their non-breeding sites. Uh, our second objective was to see the nesting colony distribution and our third objective was to monitor the nesting success. Uh, I'll come to the first objective, monitoring the breeding population. Uh, the entire 500 kilometer of the river was divided into uh, 13 stretches, approximately of 40 to 50 kilometers on each day, and it was navigated by boat. And whenever we saw skimmer colony, we uh, did a total count and we recorded the location. Uh, so if you see uh, the total count, uh, since the survey was carried out by Madhya Pradesh Forest Department almost for a decade. So since 2003, they have been monitoring. And uh, in, in 2017, we started the monitoring, the monitoring the river similarly what they have been carrying out. And uh, during our uh, experience from 2017, there are 400 to 600 birds uh, that visit uh, the sanctuary every year for nesting. Uh, in from 2010 to 2013, uh, you tend to see a, a dip in the total count. And the only reason was that the, the day 13 stretch of 40 kilometers was not covered due to some logistic reason by the reason by the MP Forest Department and hence the uh, low count was recorded during this four years. Uh, we, uh, we recorded uh, the location of all the colonies uh, uh, all the colonies uh, during this surveys. And uh, if you see the trend uh, from 2017 to, uh, 2017 to 2021, we saw that most of the colonies were recorded in the downstream area. And the only reason because of, and the only reason for this is the favorable habitat of sandbars and sandbanks. Uh, uh, the upstream of the river uh, have uh, many rocky stretch, stretch, stretches and rapids and small waterfalls, which the birds avoid. Um, We'll come to the second objective, monitoring uh, the nesting colony distribution. The birds start nesting by March uh, when the sandbars emerge in between the river uh, and uh, they actually create their nest on the sandbars uh, uh, by just creating a small depression and laying their eggs and both the parents are part of the incubation and brooding activity. Uh, from in 2017, we located 22 colonies where the birds were breeding, and uh, in the subsequent years, the number of colonies referred uh, and it ranges between 20 to uh, 30. Uh, in when we lay down all the colony locations from past four years that we have been monitoring, we again see the trend that most of the colonies are recorded in the downstream. And the interesting thing was that birds tend to use the same places for nesting every year. So this might be due to a very strong site fidelity. And to confirm that, we carried out bird ringing and color flagging since 2018. Uh, we marked uh, hatchlings, fledglings, and adults uh, at 13 
uh, nesting colonies and it was quite interesting to see that next year uh, and in the following up year almost 40 percent of our adult birds marked birds returned back to the same nesting colonies and they nested at same location which indicates that they do have a very strong site fidelity for their nesting sites and we'll come to our third uh, objective, monitoring the nesting success. Since 2018, uh, we have been uh, selecting uh, colonies and marking uh, nest over it to find out what is the hatching success and the fledging success. In 2018, we monitored 201 nests and only 23% of the eggs actually successfully hatched. And out of the hatched eggs, only 11% of the chicks could actually fledge out, which was quite a low nesting success. In 2019, when we monitored almost 256 nests, the hatching success was highest compared to 2018. But a lot of chicks, uh, chicks were lost during the nesting period and only 14% of chicks could fledge out. And the reason behind this loss was uh, extremely low water level in the river. The water level of the river is already compromised by dams and lift irrigation. And by the time the breeding season proceeds, the islands get connected to the bank and that brings all the threats like free ranging dogs, uh, which uh, you know predate on the eggs and chicks and cattles do come to the island and the trampling is quite in large scale and the, the chicks even get trampled. Uh, sand mining has, uh, is a very upcoming threat and uh, it has become a massive problem in the sanctuary. There's a very large scale sand mining happening due to which uh, some of the nesting colonies were completely hampered and birds have to abandon the colony and go and find in other colonies. So yes, the population does show an increasing trend in the chambal, uh, but the nesting success uh, remains very low between 11 to 14 percent and dogs and cattle trampling and sand mining are the major threats to Indian skimmer population here. The flow of the giants of the river, uh, it's already compromised and it, it, there is high need that it has to be restored. And if restoration is not possible, at least it, it at least there's a need to maintain that flow rate. Uh, we even plan to involve other uh, threatened river and nesting birds uh, as part of this monitoring system to understand trend of species like black belly turn river, turn river lapwing. Uh, before I end my presentation, we have even recently expanded this monitoring uh, at the uh, global level and we had announced the Indian Skim account in December 2020 and Jan 21 in two phases and uh, we got an amazing response from all the citizens uh, during phase one, uh, 154 uh, participants participated from nine states and we counted 1600 uh, uh, 1600 individuals of Indian skimmer at different sites and during the second phase we counted 1800 birds. Uh, we plan to continue this activity every year so that we understand Indian skimmer uh, population trend throughout its distribution uh, throughout its distribution range. Uh, I would like to thank all my team members because without them, this was uh, this monitoring wouldn't have been possible. And acknowledgement to all the uh, donors and partners who are part of this project. Uh, for any further questions, you can write it down to me. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Parveen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for being here to take questions. Uh, amazing work there, uh, tracking the entire length of the river, looking at survivorship and so on. Amazing work. Uh, we're going to take some questions now, uh, but uh, I think until we have some, uh, if you'd like to add any additional information about your work, please go ahead. Yeah, I think so. Some of the things that I couldn't present in my talk was about that we even uh, marking the chicks and I've so, shown that there's a very strong site fidelity among the adults coming back to the nesting sites, but we have even seen a very strong natal fidelity among the chicks and we have seen that the chicks do come back to the nesting sites. The, they don't nest in the same colony, they, they join other colonies and start, uh, try to colonize with other groups. But uh, we have seen a quite uh, strong fidelity among the chicks also coming back to the same uh, nesting areas. So that was uh, quite interesting among this species uh, in the sanctuary that we are working at. Uh, okay, there's a question from uh, Parveen, uh, from Prachi Mehta. Uh, she says, uh, yeah. you said population trend is increasing, but nesting success is low. 
Can you please yes. elaborate? Yeah, actually, the population, when we say that in Chambal, it's increasing, actually, to see that count, uh, that might be due to a lot of uh, influence in the other river systems, like Yamuna and Ganga. So you see a quite peak in the numbers in 2019, where the water level due to Kum was really high in Ganga. So we assume that uh, some birds might be moving between this river system. That's the reason there is more uh, inward uh, movement in Chambal, and there are more birds seen nesting here. Uh, we might need more studies, probably marking birds on other river systems to understand how these populations are interacting. Thanks, uh, Parveen. I'm afraid we're out yes. of time, uh, but I'm sure you'll get sure. many questions on the Slack channel. Uh, it's just such a fascinating yes. bird and such a fascinating habitat. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank